okay so I made just a quick adjustment I'm trying to just adjust one thing at a time so I moved the end of the hydraulic cylinder from here down to there so what that means is um, I had originally put it in here and I folded these against this so that that would be maxed out I had the cylinder maxed out and that's when I welded the top of the cylinder to that so I knew that as my bucket came back here and contacted this right here as that space closed that that cylinder would be maxed out okay so what I did was I dropped it down one what that means is it's not going to raise it up as high as you can see but at full um, three-point lift it still looks like it's a pretty good angle to hold my dirt it should pretty much hold everything so let's dump it and just see what it looks like at full dump so this will increase my dumping angle but it will decrease my um, holding angle I don't know what the word is for that so we'll go to dump here okay I didn't hear it hit the ground so let's full dump okay so that is a little bit steeper now one thing I wanted to say before I make this all filthy I did paint it um, this is a rust-oleum enamel which is sort of like appliance paint well it is appliance paint so it is pretty hard but what I wanted to point out was when you spray phosphoric acid on this is not a showroom finish okay you're not gonna result you're not gonna have this beautiful uh, shiny you can see the streaks in it where the phosphoric acid ran down it's still painted it's still stuck but the paint adhered to it I don't know why it looks different but that's pretty much always the case but the cool part is of course if it does it's an implement so I'm not really worried about what it looks like but I wanted to show you before I got it all dirty but uh, if it does chip off if the paint does chip off it'll never rust underneath that okay unless the metals gouged so just want to point that out let's uh, do some loading here So by tilting, by putting the pin in the very bottom where the hydraulic cylinder is, I can't tip the bucket back any further. That's as far back as the bucket tips. And you can see it's not hitting the frame, obviously. We talked about that before, but it's barely flat. So that's why if I can't make it perfect, at least make it adjustable. That's the rule, right? So making it adjustable will give me some options here because I didn't know exactly what I was doing as far as the geometry and how it would work out. So, but it does look, it doesn't look flat from the cab, but it looks flat from out here. I wanted to come out here and just make sure. So that was funny because I rammed it into the dirt pile and then I went to curl the bucket and it's already maxed out. It's not gonna curl anymore. So I had to just lift it with a three point. And curling it, obviously, as I bounce, this dirt should settle back that way. Some of it'll fall out, but I may end up going back to the way I had it where I could tip it back further. We'll just see how this load goes. Okay, so this pile of dirt was fairly continuous and so you can see what that's added already. I want to get it wide enough so that the angle of it goes just past this, get it fairly flat on top, then I'm going to drive my Jeep over it to compact it. I may end up building a ramp out this way 
and that's what I think I'm going to end up doing is building a very gradual ramp that I want to compact with the Jeep and then the tractor that I can drive up here and then dump dirt higher and higher and higher because my loader um, will dump real high but you can't get close to stuff because of the front end of the tractor. I'm not going to be able to park, hit the wheels out here and then dump stuff way up here. It just doesn't have the reach. So I'm going to have to cut sort of plan for that. I do need to get it fairly flat though so I can start putting these um, uh, the water tanks in right there. Okay, good. Well, that seemed to work. I don't think a ton fell out the back. Um, it didn't seem to settle in, it didn't seem to move around too much, at least from what I saw. Maybe we picked up more in the camera, but. All right, well, let's make a few more trips. Now, one thing I do like about the way it's adjusted right now is I know that when I have it all the way back, bucket all the way in curl, that when I put it down on the ground, it's flat. So I don't have to worry about that. But it also means I can't curl, I just have to use the three point to lift it. So there it goes. So, I guess... It's not the static load that worries me about stressing or breaking something up here. It's the bouncing as we're going down the road, or down the trail. So... As far as dirt load though I mean it's if I'm filling that thing up like that last was pretty full of course that pile shifted that way and this pile's a little further this way but okay I think I'm gonna have to call it I think the scoop holds a little bit more. Okay, that last lift, um, I must have had it under some pretty hard dirt. It cut underneath it, but when I lifted it, this bowed up right here. So I think what happened is these ends pulled in. I was worried that this bent right here, but it looks about the same as it did before. Hopefully it's coming out in the camera. So it, I thought it bent down here for sure. But I think what happened is just these ends bent in right here. So what this means is what I should have done was, um, and it's just this part bent in like that, right? Cause it couldn't bend in back here because of the piece of steel back here. And that's reflected in the buckle here, how it's very small here, but very big here. So maybe I can put the high lift jack inside there with some kind of spacers and jack it out. Um, but that's why they probably put this square tube right here, even though this is a very small piece, that's very solid. I mean, they took the time to wrap the steel all the way around to right there and then put this square tube inside here as well. So I'm not gonna do the wrapping part, but I think I will go ahead and put a square tube inside here. I got some of that two inch 3 16 uh, that I made this out of. I still got a bunch of that on the trailer, so I'll make a piece to go across here. I'll spread this back out, try to flatten that out, and then uh, weld it in here, weld it in on the two ends, and then weld it across the top. And what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is not just stitch weld it here 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 every eight inches or so i'm gonna burn it all the way in all the way across this one eighth is not strong and it's already weakened now 
So, okay. So we'll measure this down here. 66 and a half, which makes perfect sense because this is 66 inches wide, this inner part, and two quarter pieces would make 66 and a half. So, because this is a quarter inch on each outside, right? That's what I welded on the outside. And here we have 66 and a quarter. So it bent in a quarter inch. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to cut a piece at 66. Yeah? Because if I measure the inside of this, let's measure the inside. We'll put it on the inside there. That's right at 66. Okay. I'm going to cut a piece at 66, jam it up in here, bend it down over here, and just pound it into place. it there we tacked it on the inside corner there that'll keep it from hopefully rotating I'm hoping the sleeve clamps will do the same thing as well but so let's do the same thing over here Okay, this doesn't have to be um, multiple passes. This just needs to hold this in place to keep the out, outer piece of metal from trying to fold in, so. Okie doke. It's a little jumpy there where I stitched it together. My starts and stops aren't great, but they're closed at least. All right, and you can see I definitely got uh, heat through the metal there, melted out here too. You can see it kind of starts out cold as I came down, started from the top on vertical there. I started to weld the underside underneath here. I thought about doing that, but I, I think all this needs to do is be held in place and keep these sides from squishing in. So that should do it. I had a little bit of a bow right here. I started to put a big clamp on it and weld it. There's just a tiny, tiny gap there. I'm not worried. Um, all right, so let's roll some phosphoric acid on this, some OSFO. Well, here's the fix. You can see where there's fresh paint. And yep, that's it. It's just a piece of steel welded in, but Hopefully that's the only weak point we'll find. If it breaks somewhere else, we'll figure out where to reinforce it. Now that it's off the tractor, it's a little easier to see that it still looks pretty straight. I don't see any bends anywhere yet. So far so good, okay.